Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we're on episode number six, Two Hands. What did we say we were doing last week though? Three. Three, three and three. three. All right, so uh, this week we're going to be talking a lot about the All-Star game that's coming up and one in the past as well. Yep. Uh, we're also going to talk about our favorite Sharks playoff moments. Mm. Got some and good stories. We're going to end it off with the story time. Story time. Yeah. So it sounds like a pretty decent episode. So uh, you ready to start the show? Let's do it. Good. And for all of our Canadian viewers, uh, happy Wear Your Thong to Work Day. Wow. <sighs> well, uh, one of the more interesting intros that we've had <laughs> so far. Um, you know, it's so like we said, episode number six, but there's a more important number. Uh, the more important number this week is 100. Can you tell us why? Uh, we are close to 100 subscribers on right. YouTube, which is excellent. So in order to uh, celebrate the fact that we are close to 100, we're going to run a little promotion to get us there. That is correct. Uh, so, well, let's let's show it off first. Yeah, yeah we'll do It's going to be a, a Fin you Factor t-shirt. We've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of people asking us about when we're going to start selling stuff, and we're not quite there yet. We'll we'll be there probably by the season start. But yeah, uh, yeah. our producer, uh, we bought this shirt for our producer, and uh, he keeps breaking our bobbleheads <laughs> uh, by bumping the table. So we decided to uh, forget giving him the shirt, and we're going to give it away to you guys instead. <laughs> and that's not a joke either. Bobbleheads really keep breaking, mm -hmm. and uh, that is his T-shirt that we're giving away. <laughs> so. Um, uh, to do the promotion, we're going to. I just posted on Instagram before yeah. we started recording. Yeah. Um, the the I guess the entry, the way to entry mm -hmm. enter in is uh, subscribe to us. Number one, right. and number two, either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, uh, tag three friends that you think would enjoy the show, and uh, that'll be your entry in. And yeah. Good yeah. luck to everyone. And and, and from there, we'll um, we'll have our drawing or however it is we're going to go ahead about doing it, and um, we'll we'll announce the winner what next the next episode next right? week. Yeah. So you'll have until let's say Tuesday yeah. to uh, enter. Yeah, we record a little bit earlier, obviously, than when we release the video. So right. yeah, you'll have you'll have a few days, but yeah. So you have until Tuesday. Yeah. To uh, to subscribe and add a couple people in. Uh, to help us grow. So and, thank you. and they should all be subscribed anyway. You know, the nice right. thing about subscribing to our show is that uh, we only post once every week. We're not going to flood your inbox or anything. So actually, with uh, <laughs> only having one video out every week, it's it's actually pretty nice to be able to subscribe and then uh, you're getting content that you actually care about as opposed to getting something that's every day where they're just trying to fill you up with whatever content they can conjure. So um, definitely, I would say, obviously I'm biased, but uh, it's a good show to sub to if you're a Sharks fan. So. Yeah, and I just saw my mom yesterday and she said that she's two shows behind, so... Oh. Like she doesn't have enough TV to watch. Lori. Catch up, mom. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Cool. So um, that'll be our, our giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and move this so you guys can see all the, the bobbles back again. But uh, the next thing I kind of want to talk about was uh, my experience over at Pure Hockey. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was over the last weekend. I went to, uh, to Twitter, posted some pictures. Uh, me over there with my sons. Uh, one of my sons is old enough to do the Little Sharks program. And um, he's he let me borrow his stick so I could show you guys. He was really <laughs> excited about it. So, um, well, I'll do it this way actually. Yeah. So there you go. It says uh, little sharks on the stick there. It's wooden one, it's but cool. yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, we we have one that we bought that's you know um, a different like composite. It's a composite, yeah. and it's got a curve to it. If you look uh, head on, that blade is as flat as can be, and that's so that they can tell or they can have the kids figure out if they're left-handed or right-handed. You also notice the. Uh, the choice of yeah. uh, tape. <laughs> he nice. wanted the flames on on the blade. And like, okay, cool. Smart kid. Yeah. Well, he also wanted blue on the shaft up there, so I had to pay for two rolls of tape instead mm. and one. But again, smart kid. Smart kid. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> in any case, um, just thought it was cool. I want to shout out the guys over at Pure Hockey. Um, you guys did an awesome job, the, the setup, and I know you guys have been doing this for a long time with the Little Sharks program, and um, I just wanted to say, you know, hey, good on you guys. It's great getting the youth involved and having everybody out there. Uh, the, the program is excellent. It's ver not very high cost, and it gets kids involved and into it, and they get to figure out if, if hockey's for them. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool program. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe my kids will get into it when they get old enough. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. I, for me, I'm just looking forward to the day where I get to play uh, my beer league games with my son un yeah. until he gets <laughs> better than me, which he'll be like 10 yeah. when, he, when that happens. Um, I let 10-year-olds in beer league. 
Well, I mean, not we wouldn't call it beer league then, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, uh, now his skill level will ramp up. I'm sure he already. I, I don't know. I've told you this already, but um, we were just playing on the carpet, and he um, he one timed a, a dense foam ball at me. First of all, he <laughs> one timed it. Yeah. Um, and this was like a year plus ago, and it hit me in the shoulder, and it actually stung. So the kid's got quite a shot, wow. and uh, he's he's bigger, stronger, faster, five year old now. <laughs> just make sure he's not a goalie. He wants to play goalie too. Oh, yeah, he's, oh, he's into bad. it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I yeah, told yeah. my son, don't well, be a goalie. <laughs> and that's how Jonathan Quick became a goalie, if, really? you, if you know that story. Yeah, yeah actually, Jonathan Quick, he uh, he was, uh, his dad said you had to score like uh, two hat tricks or something like that to, if you want me to buy the pads. Yeah. So he goes out and he scores a hat trick, and then he plays the next game, he scores another hat trick, and his dad goes, okay, that's great, but I meant two hat tricks in one game. <laughs> so then Quick goes out and scores two hat tricks <laughs> in a game, so he's fine, I'll buy you the pads. So, oh. yeah, that's actually how he got started. Hey, if my kid is ever that good, Whatever. I'm happy. And yeah. it'll be all thanks to the folks at Pure Hockey and the <laughs> Little Sharks program. So we've come full circle. Right. <laughs> In any case, just want to give a quick shout out. Now we're going to get into the meat of the show. We wanted to talk about the All-Star game, mm -hmm. both past and present. So I think I'll let uh, Aaron kind of jump in on that, actually. Sure. Uh, San Jose is set to host the All-Star game again for the second time. Mm -hmm. um, we were kind of talking about this earlier. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the Sharks have the third oldest arena in the NHL, which sounds crazy because mm -hmm. it was, wasn't built that long. It was built in our lifetime. Yeah. So it's not like it was something from, you know, ages relics. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So um, it, it's crazy that they're, it's it was built the same time as the Honda Center down in uh, Anaheim, mm -hmm. uh, which they entered the league, I think, a year after the Sharks, but um, their arenas were built around the same time. Uh, as the Sharks played those first two seasons in Cow Palace and then moved into the arena. Anyway, uh, they hosted the All-Star Game in 1997, January of 97, mm -hmm. and uh, at that point the arena was only three years old, so it was probably one of the newest arenas at the time. Right. Um, and uh, now they're going to be hosting it again, what is that, 20, if I can do my math, 22 years later? So it'll be it'll be na 2019, 19, yeah. Uh, yeah, January of 19. 22, yeah. So 22 years later, still have the same arena, which <laughs> I think it's cool. Like I think, yeah. uh, I don't know if they'll do some. That'd be cool if they did some back and forth shots of uh, the before and after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be kind of cool the to old see. The new, yeah. But uh, anyway, I was going through the All Star rosters. Um, oh, yeah. Of of the original of the original the 96, game, 97, the 97 yeah. game. Holy mm -hmm. cow! Um, I mean, we grew up watching a lot of Sharks hockey yeah, at that yeah. time too, so we knew a lot of those players. But man, like uh, both rosters. East and West. Stacked. Uh, in fact, I'll just I'll pull them up. I'll have them on yeah. the screen right now so you can take a look. Um, more than half of these players are in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's crazy. Like I'll, I'll run the stats and we'll probably do a producer knowing exactly how many, but right. uh, more than half those guys I think are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. And they're fun to watch. I mean, you could, you could go back and watch that game, but would you, what do you remember most from that game? Well, obviously, we, and we talked about it before. For yeah. me, the, the biggest memory is the Owen Nolan uh, calling his shot, getting the hat trick over Dominic Hasek. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't think that was uh, assisted by anyone. Actually, I think it was, it was a breakaway. Yeah, it was a breakaway. Yeah, yeah. actually, the, this funny. We talked about another player uh, in our last episode, Theo Fleury. Yeah, he assisted on one of the Nolan goals in that All Star game as well. It's just kind of a cool to, to see yeah. his name pop up after we had just talked about him. Right. But definitely, for me, that's that's the biggest part that stands out. Obviously, is uh, Owen Nolan you know, coming down that left side and just kind of points. It was also his hat trick goal. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, and you had mentioned too last episode that you felt he got robbed, and, oh, yeah. and I, I totally agree. Mark Recchi also got a hat trick, yes. and he ended up getting the MVP. And that was the problem, right? But uh, come on, man. Yeah. Hometown hero. <laughs> it, yeah, just I'm still bitter yeah. about it. It's been 22 <laughs> years. So, uh, yeah, and, and um, his first two goals, which I didn't realize, I, I just looked it up. Uh, yeah. He scored two goals eight seconds back apart. Back to back, that's in right. In the second yeah. period. That's right. So that was that's kind of cool. That's yeah. crazy. I think they said that was a record. It was like the fastest. I mean, maybe I just at the time. I don't know if it's it could have been still holds. Right now, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just just crazy. You know, um, seeing that that same arena, and we're gonna do it again. So yeah. um, <laughs> I don't know. What are you looking forward to in in the new uh, All Star Game? The new one. I mean, um, I kind of liked. Well, uh, the original one used to be East versus West. Uh, conferences and then uh, then it became they tried to do something different where they drafted players right I thought that was cool because 
to me, the NHL has kind of a problem with uh, personalities not mm-hmm. getting out there. And I think some close up close FaceTime, you get a little banter of the players. And I, I think it would be really cool instead of the fans picking the starting lineup, they get to pick the captains of the teams. Right. So right now they switch to a format of three on three, mm-hmm. which is great. It's Love exciting. It. Yeah. Um, it's exciting hockey to watch. It's so wide open and you have the best players in the world yeah. playing three on three hockey, yeah. which is just, it's so fast. So um, I think the format is great, but I'd, I'd like to see maybe where you choose, instead of doing a division mm-hmm. division opponents against each other, you do it with a captain of, you pick, I don't know, I don't know how many teams there are. Is there how many divisions are there? Four in the NHL? Yeah, four right? divisions. There's currently 31 total teams. Right. Yeah. So if you did, um, maybe even make it more three-on-three teams instead of four three-on-three yeah. three teams. Like yeah. You'd, Six or eight or something like that, yeah. But you'd you'd break it down into more teams, and you'd have the captains. There'd be more captains essentially, and just pick the the teams, maybe smaller teams if you. Or maybe you just pick four. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I haven't quite worked this out. (laughs) But I just like the format of of picking players, and I love how they had the person that got picked last uh, (laughs) winning a car. (laughs) Right. And it happened to be, I think, the first year they did it was Logan Couture won Mm -hmm. a Honda, and I tweeted at him to see if he still had the car, but he hasn't gotten back to me. Why? Yeah. Logan, get back to us, bro. Yeah. What's going on? I, I do remember that the key was gigantic, and somebody yeah. had mentioned that it was a key for uh, Big Z's, the Anochara's car. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, pretty cool that yeah. they had made a little commentary about it. But yeah, um, Logan, you know, had won the car. I'm, I don't even, he probably donated it. I don't know if you could say but, winning if he won the car. Well, you still win. You lose to win, but you... Right, you win. So <laughs> consolation prize for being. Big I mean, blood. someone's gonna get a T-shirt out of us. I would say that's a win, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> so, def- that's true. Yeah. Good point, right? So um, yeah, I don't know. I was th- trying to think of ways um, that they could make the All Star Game better and more engaging. And I don't know. I, I, I like your idea. I like that. There's you know more personalities that get brought out when they have the the picks and whatnot instead of it just being divisions and you know whatever. The only picking they do is which line they're gonna put out, right? He's yeah. like. They have a set group of guys that they want to keep together, and those those guys gel for that short period of time, right? But I don't know. I'm kind of on board with that. I can see that. At the same time, I totally understand where they say we want to have uh, each division go up against each other because you know people feel tied to their team and therefore tied to that division. Yeah. So there's something to root for, right? Um, and like you had mentioned before, if there's two players from from the same team and they go play on different teams, which it may have happened with the Sedins, I think one year when they did this, yeah, they got split up. Yeah, they got split up, and then it's kind of like a f- if you're a Vancouver fan, at least at that time, if you're a Vancouver fan, not anymore. But um, <laughs> you know, who do you root for, right? Which which team? So you're kind of stuck. So I mean, we're thinking about ways to make the All Star Game better, right? And yeah. uh, well, okay, maybe not even the All Star Game. Let's talk about the skills competition then. What would you do to yeah. make the skills competition better? So skills competition, I've always liked the skills competition more than the All Star Game. To okay. me, the All Star Game is kind of boring because um, the player, like hockey, is such a fast and violent sport. Mm-hmm. Not that I need it to be super violent, but you want your guys to go all out and like block shot, like make it like a playoff game, like that the. the you can't recreate a playoff atmosphere without yeah. it being playoffs. Yeah. Nobody wants to get hurt. Exactly. I understand yeah. the players that. are going half speed. So, and, yeah. and that's not just hockey. That's every sport, like uh, Pro Bowl, baseball, uh, football. Yeah, yeah. football is even it's worse. A joke. Yeah. Um, basketball, even, it's just like uh, no defense yeah. whatsoever. So just, it's just like ah, whatever. Right. So to me, like for hockey, I like I like watching the speed competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fastest skater is always fun. Uh, the shooting where they have to hit the targets is cool. The shooting, yeah. And even the the hardest shot. I mean, hardest shot is awesome. Can be can be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, depending who's up, right? Yeah. And and like you compare that. It, you know, come to think of it, I kind of like all the skill competition stuff. Right. I, I mean, really, the the stick handling back and forth, going through the puck. That's cool. Uh, uh, or through the pucks, they have that are lined up out there. Have you they've seen the got, obstacle course that they do? Yeah. I think that's cool. It's a cool addition that they've done. Well, they've they've got uh, what like five different stations. Yeah. And uh, God, the hardest one has got to be the sauce pass into yeah. the little little mini nets that are like that big yeah. that that's tough that's real tough it's embarrassing too when they when they can't do it yeah like you you see this really really good all-star player and they can't make it and then <laughs> then they start getting some grief from yeah, yeah from yeah. their teammates which i think we need more of like you need more cameras on the ice and in the face and maybe not you in want the more space, personality yeah throughout it you yeah, want right. everybody mic'd up you want everything picked up and, yeah. and going but um i think that's a great 
it's embarrassing. Yeah. Because you got pressure on you, like, like oh, I do this a million yeah. times in a game, but I can't recreate it putting it into a little net. Like, yeah. that's, that's really difficult. It's different when you're standing still versus when you're going full speed and... It, strangely, it's almost uh, it, it's it's more intuitive when you're going at speed because you're all you're practicing that. is at speed. All yeah. it, everything that you're thinking is at speed, and they're asking you to stand still and try to hit this little thing that's way out there, and you never really do that in a game situation, in a practice situation. You never do it. So um, yeah, it's got to be really difficult. But the uh, the skills competition did bring us uh, one of the best moments, I think, as well with Mark. Uh, no, Mike Smith. Mark Smith. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Mike Smith, um, the goaltender, launching it from all the way down at the I his net to score a goal, right? To score a goal, and yeah. the, it wasn't just scoring a goal; it was scoring a goal in a hole that was like that big. Wow, really? Yeah, it, it was like a little slot that they cut out, yeah. and he it went right in. It was just amazing that he did that. I mean, yeah, I think the skills competition has a lot more um, things that are enjoyable for the fans. Um, well, it's exciting because the players could take their helmets off. Yeah, so you get to see like their hair, you get to see their personality, you get to see like more of them, like the dirty flow. Right, yeah. you just you don't get that like you, when they're wearing helmets. I mean, it's kind of like when Kerry Fraser, the referee, yeah, like he was known for his hair that was like matted <laughs> plastic and didn't move, and then he'd wear the helmet. You're kind of yeah. like, oh. No, I forget which one he is. I have to memorize what number referee he is. It's just not as, I don't know, the personality is kind of, yeah. I, it's safety, I, I understand yeah. that. I'm not saying not to, not to play with helmets. Right, right, right. But on, the, on the topic of hair, there was uh, I, the guy Rob from work, who's the Kings fan. I, I forgot what it was. He was saying, he was watching some game, and they started fighting, and they had long hair, and like the helmets were off and everything, and the commentator had said, and the salad goes flying. <laughs> <laughs> just a really cool phrase. I just thought I'd bring it up. Anyway, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, I, I think there's, I don't know that there's much to change really with the skills competition. I think that's that's a, a highlight for yeah. the All-Star game. Yeah, it's maybe just the game itself could use a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, I mean, the three-on-three -three makes it a lot easier yeah. to watch. I think it's a lot more exciting now yeah. than it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. But And they also have a, they dangle a prize, right? Like you win a million dollars or something for the winning team. Uh, yeah, they divide it up amongst the so team. So it, it makes them want to play and actually right. win. And um, so you're seeing more of an effort uh, but at the same time, they're still loose and having fun, yeah, and and enjoying themselves. They're not going to hurt themselves, hopefully. Right. But yeah. I yeah. can't even remember a a favorite All Star game moment outside of one, and <laughs> it's it's the John Scott story. Yeah, and if you don't know the John Scott story, essentially what happened was he was voted in by fans as they were basically trolling the NHL, right? Yeah. He got voted in by the this fans. This is why you can't have nice things. Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> John Scott in the All-Star Game. You know what Bodie McBoatface is? Never heard of that. <laughs> so, uh, several years ago okay. in England, in uh, they had a competition online to name this new boat going into service. <laughs> and Bodie McBoatface won. So anytime there's a oh there's a God. competition online to, to do anything like that, like name yeah. a building, name this airplane, name, it's it's yeah. now like if it's an airplane, it's airplane make airplane face, oh like it's God. just it's trolling. It's yeah, exactly, exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah, this is true. this is why we cannot have nice things. Well, in this well in this case, the the night it, it gave me a nice cool. thing. It's yeah, cool. it really did because this was the one All Star game that I was really jazzed and pumped about. And it was probably the one All-Star game where a player not even in the NHL uh, got like standing ovations yeah. from the was well, from Nashville's crowd. Um, I, you know, hats off to Nashville's crowd for that moment. The rest of your uh, time, you're kind of obnoxious, but <laughs> uh, for that moment, um, I was I was very proud of the Nashville fan base, the way that they treated John Scott during that that whole thing. So basically, what happened was he got voted in. Um, then he gets traded from was Montreal at the time? No, I no, think it was, it was Phoenix to Montreal. Phoenix to Montreal. Montreal buried him in the or AHL. Maybe the way around, I can't remember. No, it was Phoenix to Montreal because he was in the Pacific. That's why he right. was a Pacific Division captain. So when he got voted in, it was because of uh, he was on the Coyotes and right. he was the Pacific Division captain because he got so many more votes than anybody else, which is hilarious because he's a write-in vote. So anyway, uh, he got traded to Montreal. Montreal buried him in the AHL. So he's not even an NHLer anymore. So they're trying to say, they're well... They're trying to do a workaround to get him to not play in, in the game. Yeah. And they wanted him to say, hey, it's cool. I'm not going to play. And Until he didn't. Until somebody made a phone call and said, hey, man, this isn't really your thing. What are your daughters going to think of you? Yeah. And he said, okay, to hell with that, I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, chance of a lifetime thanks for to his that, daughters. Right? Thanks to that obnoxious phone call, it pushed him back in. And um, 
it was the greatest thing that could have happened, honestly, for the game of hockey in terms I, of all star games. I mean, any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, in my opinion, absolutely. It, when you're in that kind of level, so yeah. I think uh, it worked out well. Obviously, mm -hmm. the NHL ended up looking good. Yeah, because they let him play. Yeah, after complaining and kind of saying, "Oh, he shouldn't play. We're not going to let him play," and everyone right. kind of, you know. Again, social media, and, yeah. and this is why we can't have nice things kind of <laughs> deal. Like people throw fits about everything. So, um, so rightfully so, they mm -hmm. should they should have let them play because yeah. they're ab abiding by the rules, which yeah. they did not change the rules. I mean, they might have tweaked a little certain things. You can mm -hmm. only vote so many times now instead of stuffing the ballots, but um, it could still happen. You yeah. could still have a random player. Yeah. In fact, I think it's happened the year before that. It almost happened. Oh, really? It didn't quite catch it didn't quite do it but there was, i can't remember the name of the guy but he was like a a fringe nhl player oh like <laughs> it, it was really like kind of like you see it like you saw it kind of happening you're like how is this guy getting voted yeah. in you're kind of like ah screw it i'll vote for him too sure yeah so that's that's kind of how it took off yeah. and it's probably how this john scott thing took well off. yeah that's exactly how the john scott thing took off it, it just hit social and on reddit and whatever else and people just say okay cool i'm gonna jump on this bandwagon and they they voted him in well he ends up with the all-star MVP. Uh, yeah. He scored two goals, I think it was, in the, the final game. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful when he scored. Was it was the first goal in that game or just the first goal in general. He, he does this, like, windmill and he drags his glove yeah. behind him, you know, and he was really loving it. And it was, it was great to see because this is this guy who, he's a good hockey player, but he's never been asked to play hockey. He'd always been asked to punch faces. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Brent Burns had made that comment, too. He'd said, you know, the guy's an NHLer. He's still a good hockey player. You know, Everybody in the NHL, at, at that stage, when they get to the NHL, yeah. they were the best scorers on their team leading up until they pretty much got to the NHL. Then it was like, like for John Scott, hey, you're this huge yeah. dude, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. he's just a monster. And they're like, uh, just go beat up that guy yeah. instead of uh, playing hockey. Plus, he's probably slower than most people, too. Yeah. So that's probably a little bit of it. But still, he still has the skill. Yeah. Like, he has great hockey skills, which most, most of those guys do. Which actually brings up uh, another point. Um, if you've ever watched, I think it's called Sports Science or something like that. It's, it's yeah. a, a show where they... Uh, I'll fast forward. Basically, what happened was they had a uh, they had George Peros, who was again a face puncher, and they had a sumo wrestler in hockey or goalie gear, right? Because that was the idea: yeah. was can't you just put a really big guy in front of the Stupid. net and stop everything? The net is bigger than you think it is. First of all, it's four it's by six, four yeah. feet tall and six feet wide. That's really large. That's that's you humongous. Can't yeah, fit a fat dude on the ice but you and can, block everything. You can fit a, a puck past a fat dude and uh, and all you have to have is a George Paris shooting it because he didn't miss. Nice. And the sumo wrestler guy, he couldn't stop anything couldn't despite move. his size because he couldn't move. <laughs> Was he right? on skates? Uh, I don't know if they put him on skates. Uh. They probably didn't put him on skates to give him the advantage, but it didn't matter. I mean, you know, again, these guys, even though they're face punchers, if you, if you want to call them that, enforcers really is the name for it, but they've still got the skill and it came out in that game where you know Scott was able to to score some goals and he just it, for me it was just the story man he was having such a great time you know mm -hmm. it was kind of like that I love that underdog story you know he's the Rudy he's yeah the Rudy of the all exactly yeah. yeah so in any case that for me was the most uh, meaningful I guess if you'll say all-star yeah. game and I kind of look at other formats and I say, okay, how can we kind of recreate any of that? And the only way to do it is to troll them with another enforcer, right. but um, it's already been done, so it, it'll never happen again. But in any case, um, I just thought it was a really cool story and um, one of my favorite all-star moments. And from there, I think we can lead straight on into our favorite shark playoff moments. Sure. So I think you uh, wanted to start your story off, no? Or was it me? Uh, you. It was me? Start. Yeah. Okay. What was, what's your favorite? So I know Aaron's ahead of time, and um, I, I'm going to say, first of all, I'm not going to say what it is, I'm going to talk about it, but I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that that is one of the, I'm going to finish that off, that is one of the greatest um, playoff moments of all time. Of all time, <laughs> okay, absolutely. But mine, uh, a very close runner-up. Um, of course, it deals with the Kings. <laughs> Anytime we're we're smacking the Kings around, I'm happy with that. Yeah, sorry, Rob. Um, Rob's guy at work. <laughs> uh. But um, basically, what it was, 2011, and the Sharks are facing the Kings, and I think it was Game Three or Two or something like that. And the Sharks go down three nothing in the first period. And then 44 seconds into the second period, they get another goal against, and they pull Ante Niemi. And Antero, I think is his first name, Nidamaki, yep. he comes in in relief. 
and the second period starts off and the Sharks end up scoring five goals in the second period uh, which is berserk the Kings scored one too. and this Kings scored one on Nittimaki. Um then the third period goes by nothing happens they go into overtime and I forget it was Marlo Marlo to set up Marlo made this beautiful pass um, he's coming down the left wing boards and he floats it across and oddly it's Joe Thornton crashing the net and Marlo making the pass mm. but he passes it he threads it through like three kings yeah. and Setaguchi just nails it in and it's just such a beautiful goal and yeah. everyone's erupting they're just mobbing Setaguchi and it's in LA so everyone's crying and I love it um, but it was just like for me that was just like the, the craziest comeback and you actually had mentioned um, being on your phone or seeing it on your phone at the time. Yeah, I was at the uh, the A's Red Sox game because mm-hmm. we always go every year whenever the Red Sox are in town. It's my wife's from Boston, right. so um, we were on Bart on the way home. Actually, during the game, I looked down on my phone. I go four <laughs> nothing. Like, oh come on! Like, I'm not even gonna check. Yeah. Like, that's one game in the series. I'll just watch the other one. So, like, I'm glad I'm not watching this on TV right now. <laughs> so then we're on Bart and we're on our way back out of the game. And I look at my phone and I go, what? Am I, <laughs> am I reading this right? They won in overtime? So I'm like flipping through the um, the score sheet like right. the, to see the time stamps of the goals. And I'm like, oh my God, it was an incredible game. Yeah. So as soon as we got home, I, like, I put it on TV and I was like watching the highlights. That was when it was on Versus yeah. back in the day. Yeah, old school. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I missed the game. I didn't get to watch it on TV. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I was... I remember where I was yeah. <laughs> and how mad I was. <laughs> right. I missed it all. Well, I mean, that just goes to show, uh, I mean, and we've we've seen it before with the Sharks. If you are watching the Sharks, you weren't at the time, but if you are watching the Sharks and they're down by a lot, don't just give up on them right away because you never know with this team. Mm. Uh, they, uh, Especially this year, you know, they're, they're offensively deep. And, I mean, they could just blow up at any point in time and just score a whole bunch on you. So, yeah, never take your eye off of it. Never leave your seat. Yeah. So um, anyway, that was a, a really good one that I liked, and of course that series ended off with the the jumbo slide. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that was another overtime winner, and and uh, jumbo. It was the series clincher, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a series clincher, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was another overtime one. Yeah. Um, the puck just happened to, like, it, was, it got shot and it trickled out. And Jumbo turned, he had his back to the goal, and the puck was right in front of him, and he just kind of wheeled around and threw it in. And um, he just throws his hands up, yeah. skates, and he slides, and he's on his back, and he's sliding through. Actually, what's funny is uh, if you watch that clip of him sliding, just before they cut to Jonathan Quick, uh, belly down, crying on the ice, <laughs> um, it, it, you see uh, someone's knee hit jumbo in the head oh right <laughs> yeah you, you'll see him he's like sliding yay and then all of a sudden his head goes boom like this really fast <laughs> and then it cuts immediately to to quick um and i think after that when they show him again he's kind of getting up and like okay <laughs> so i don't know if he got knocked a little bit there but anyway um definitely one of my favorite moments um so that that was mine and uh, aaron's which uh, again, probably my favorite but yeah <laughs> one of my favorites was uh back in well, i think it was 2006 uh, it was the they're playing the Edmonton Oilers. This is when Chris Pronger was on the team, Ryan Smith. And, yeah, every time Pronger had the puck, they're booing. Uh, I was at the I was at this game nice. with uh, with my buddy Marshall, and uh, we had season tickets at the time. And um, that was, I think, the loudest I've ever heard the arena out of all the games I've ever been to. Wow. I don't think it's ever been that loud uh, since then. Um, it was a five on three penalty kill, and it was a penalty kill. It wasn't a goal. Yeah. So five on three penalty kill for almost a full two minutes, like a minute forty or something. Yeah. Um, Edmonton just could not score. Hmm. Um, on the ice for the Sharks was I think it was Mark Smith on, at the only forward, yeah. and then it was McLaren and Hannon. Right. And then it was Nidamaki or no Toscala. Toscala. Yeah. Vesa Tos- Toscala. Vesa Toscala. That's the throwback. <laughs> he was in goal. Um, anyway, Edmonton. I, I'll. I'll post up uh, a link to the clip so you can watch it. But Edmonton and we'll just put it in the little info card. Thing oh, yeah, up there. Up, yeah. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Edmonton just was passing the puck around, could not get an open shot. Yeah. Um, and then one of the defensemen breaks a stick. Hannon. It, Hannon, mm-hmm. yeah. And then... Uh, Almost immediately after that, right. Smith breaks his. Yeah, and then Smith broke his. So mm-hmm. it was a five-on-three with two of the penalty killers without a stick. Yeah. So it's almost like a five-on-one. Yeah. Just absolutely nuts. <laughs> They're moving the puck around both lines. The forwards or the the offense, the power play and the penalty killer are just gassed. Yeah. Like the puck is staying in the zone and nobody can move. 
like the sharks are just basically just standing there and keep getting hit with the puck like blocking <laughs> it and eventually i'm pretty sure it's smith mark smith jumps and dives on the puck and throws it out of the zone and it was in the second period so it's the hannon. long change that was hannon, I think it was hannon yeah oh, God, screw this either way it's okay yeah the fact it was, it was is, a blur. it was amazing. But it was crazy. It was absolutely nuts. They yeah. should have scored. I mean, just the looks on their faces yeah. of both Edmonton just not scoring and the Sharks just, the crowd was just yeah. so energetic, so crazy because they should have scored at least four times on yeah. that thing. So then they, the puck goes out and that's the end of the clip. However, <laughs> the clip, the clip that. ends. So they clear the puck. They get they get some guys out. Uh, one, of the, one of the penalties is up. So now it's a five on four. So when they clear the puck, Edmonton goes back and gets it behind the net and skates down and scores. Yeah, like it was like ah, oh. like it was so loud and then it just kind of dies. But um, what but if, was cool, if you if you watch it from the perspective of the YouTube clip, right? Though, yeah, it's, it's great. It's like they won the cup. Yeah, like, it was just I mean, absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's still that that moment. Maybe not the extended moment, but that moment was one of the craziest, again loudest that yeah. you've ever heard the tank. Yeah. And it was just it was just amazing that you've got you know a five on three with two broken sticks. Yeah. Like it's just insane. The only thing like more incredible than that would be the goaltender not having a stick, <laughs> right? I mean, everybody it's just, it's with a broken stick. Absolutely incredible that they didn't score. And the Sharks did such an amazing job staying in the passing lanes uh, and in the shooting lanes. Yeah. That if you're watching the clip, Edmonton's just passing it around the horn, and they they can't get a shot off yeah. uh, for a good amount of time. And when they do, they're either blocking it or Tosca is making a big save. And it was just it was just nuts. It was just crazy. Yeah, it's also the um, the clip is. You'll see it's from oh. the days before HD, so it's really hard to see. The, the quality's not the greatest. Two forty p. Yeah, that's yeah, really <laughs> bad. But it's you, you can crank the volume up and you can listen. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Just you can you can hear it through the broadcast of how loud it was. Uh, so yeah, that was my favorite nice. shark playoff moment. Uh, at, at least my shark favorite shark playoff moment that I attended. That's that's probably Fair. a better one. Yeah, but, yeah. And so actually, that's going to be our fresh catchphrase for the week uh, this week. And we're gonna have the what was gonna be um, hashtag TFF remembers I think yep. yeah the fin factor remembers TFF remembers so if you guys have a, a special playoff moment that uh, you remember or that you think was maybe better than ours I don't think there is one to be honest with you but yeah. that's again biased yeah just let so. us know what your favorite playoff <laughs> sharks playoff moment yes. Yeah. And the nice thing about that is, you know, you can you can always give us a link, or you can describe it in your own words. Um, in your own words for the emotional part of it is awesome, uh, but you know, the link so everybody else can just watch what that moment was uh, would be helpful too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But either way, yeah, just just let us know. And again, we'd like to have that conversation with you. We think it'd be cool. Maybe yeah. we remember some of them too. So. Yeah, we love to hear your stories. So please tell us a lot of your stories. We like to read them and give you a little shout out on the show. Cool. Well, so, uh, on the topic of Mark Smith being out there on, on the ice at the time, I think we've got a little bit of story time. And I don't have a story. Aaron's got a story, but it does involve Mark Smith. Sure. That same uh, season, and I don't know if it was, it was probably after the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, frequenting uh, Mountain Charlie's mm -hmm. down in Las Gatas back in the day. And uh, <laughs> towards the end of the night, I see Mark Smith enter with Nico Dimitrakos. This is some throwback names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Josh Hennessy was another guy who was I, I a always, prospect. I always said uh, Nico Gimme Tacos. Like, <laughs> I don't, I'm just, sure you loved that. I'm sure, he, yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> so they, they come in the bar, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow, I can't believe the Sharks players here. And I'm looking around, I'm like, nobody recognizes these people <laughs> except me. Like, I... Maybe there's just no Sharks fans around. They don't know what they look like. But I'm like, I, I know exactly who each three of these guys are. Right. So um, <laughs> Mark Smith was, yeah, he was a little uh, loosey-goosey and, and hanging out. And so I'm like, hey, can I buy you a beer? Like, And he goes, beer? Give me some tequila. And I was like, oh, <laughs> all right. So Hold on. I think Doug Murray just grabbed two bottles. Yeah, of yeah. Back. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So we belly up at the bar and, and order some shots of tequila we put him down and we're arm in arm like yeah he's at this point he's like gone <laughs> wait, wait wait you and mark smith are arm in arm <laughs> arm in arm like arm in arm drinking like doing a shot arm in arm and i'm like this is the greatest night of my life <laughs> i'm hanging out with sharks drinking in a bar this is incredible at that point awesome. was the greatest point of my life. yeah sure sure yeah, yeah um and um yeah so that so we're drinking hanging out and then i look over and there's there's nico and josh sitting up in the corner kind of and just nico is just like like just <laughs> disapproving disapproving like a disapproving dad that's what he looked like like wondering where the tacos are yeah <laughs> but he just was just and josh was just like totally not even 
paying attention, like not even interested, like yeah. whatever, this is stupid, let's get out of here. Like you could tell they just did not want to be there. And um, Mark was just like all over the place. So anyway, I have a picture, I'll, I'll post it up and yeah. you, can, you can see. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the greatest of pictures, but... That's a great picture. Yeah. No, like the, the look, first of all, the look on pretty much everyone's faces in that picture. Right. Is, Mark uh, is he, pretty solid. Mark does not look sober in the no, picture. And he was not, not at close. all. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just very excited. You can see the excitement in my face. Yeah, like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> um, but anyway, that, 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 that again? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> that was, uh, I'm not sure I got it right. Mark, uh, anyway, a little follow up on Mark. He was, he no longer plays in the NHL. He's yeah. retired, but he has a band. I don't know if he's local. I got to look this up. I got to mm -hmm. see if we can, maybe we can even get him on the show and talk about it. He's probably, oh, like, that'd be great. I don't remember having we'll shots. We'll have tequila here. shots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a bottle and, right and here. Tacos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really hungry. I want tacos. Just so you know, tacos. Anyway, right. Go ahead. <laughs> so, that, that's pretty much the end of the story. Like, that was yeah. the end of the night. We parted ways, and I was like, wow, that was really no cool. No exchange of phone numbers, nothing no, like that. No, it would be no. weird. No. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's just weird. Well, then, I guess that brings us to the end of episode six. Right. Six. We're there. We've made it. We did. And it's only six, really. But we're, we're going to have a lot more for you guys as the season goes on. So, uh, again, don't forget about the t-shirt giveaway. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, they need to subscribe subscribe number one mm -hmm. and then on top of that you have to either uh post or uh tag three friends on facebook instagram or twitter okay seems pretty easy to me mm -hmm. free That's swag it. okay well we will see you guys number six is in the books thanks for watching and uh we'll see you next week we'll see we you next week. number seven <laughs> we'll see you next week bye 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 hey everyone thanks for checking out the show you can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.